Hello my dear children myself Sujata today we'll deal with a chapter from democratic politics chapter 3 electoral politics first let us see the topics to be discussed today we'll have a overview of the chapter and discuss on why do we need elections what makes an election democratic is it good to have political competition Okay first let us have an overview of the chapter we know that in a democracy it is neither possible nor necessary for people to govern directly the most common form of democracy in our times is for the people to govern through their representatives in this chapter we will look at how these representatives are elected let us begin by understanding why elections are necessary and useful in a democracy how electoral competition among parties serves the people and what makes an election democratic the basic idea here is to distinguish democratic elections from non democratic elections okay we take a look at each stage of elections from the drawing of boundaries of different constituencies to the declaration of results okay first let us understand the term constituency a constituency is the voting areas in which the country is divided these areas are defined by parliament or group of voters in a specified area elect a representative to a legislative body elections are of three types first type of election is a general election it takes place after every 5 years by elections it takes place when an elected leader dies or resigns and a seat is vacant midterm elections takes place when government is not able to complete its 5 years Okay now now let us have a discussion on why elections considering the example of Haryana listen to this except the time is after midnight an expectant crowd sitting for the past 5 hours in a chowk of the town is waiting for its leader to come the organizers assure and reassure the crowd that he would be here any moment the crowd stands up whenever a passing vehicle comes that way it arouses hopes that he has come the leader is mr devi lal chief of the haryana sangarsh samiti who was to address a meeting in karnal on thursday night the 76 year old leader is a very busy man these days his day starts at 8 am and ends after 11 pm he had already addressed nine election meetings since morning being constantly addressing public meetings for the past 23 months and preparing for this election this newspaper report is about the state assembly election in haryana in 1987 the state had been ruled by a congress party led government since 1982 choudhary devi lal then an opposition leader led a movement called nyaya youth meaning struggle for justice and formed a new party logdal his party joined other opposition parties to form a front against the congress in the elections in the election campaign devi lal said that if his party won the elections his government would waive the loans of farmers and small businessmen he promised that this would be the first action of his government the people were unhappy with the existing government they were also attracted by devi lal's promise so when elections were held they voted overwhelmingly in favor of logadal and its allies logadal and its partners won 76 out of 90 seats in the state assembly logadal alone won 60 seats and thus had a clear majority in the assembly 
the congress could win only 5 seats once the election results were announced the sitting chief minister resigned the newly elected members of legislative assembly of logadal chose devi lal as the leader the governor invited devi lal to be the new chief minister 3 days after the election results were declared he became the chief minister as soon as he became the chief minister his government issued a government order waiving the outstanding loans of small farmers agricultural laborers and small businessmen his party ruled the state for 4 years the next elections were held in 1991 but this time his party did not win popular support the congress won the election and formed the government okay jagdeep and now preet read the story and drew the following conclusions can you say which of these are right or wrong or if the information given in the story is and inadequate to call them right or wrong so the findings of jagdeep and now preet include elections can lead to changes in the policy of the government the governor invited devi lal to become the chief minister because he was impressed with his speeches people are unhappy with every ruling party and vote against it in the next election the party that wins the election forms the government this election led to a lot of economic development in haryana the congress chief minister need not have resigned after his party lost elections okay now try to do this activity do you know when the last assembly election was held in your state which other elections have taken place in your locality in the last 5 years write down the level of elections national assembly panchayat etc when were they held and the name and designation mp mla etc of the persons who got elected from your area so you know that elections are, are conducted at different levels for direct representatives lok sabha elections that happens at national level it is for electing mps vidhan sabha election that happens at state level for selecting the mlas and as you know now the local level elections are happening try to find out how it is carried out in your locality that is in your town city or village okay why do we need elections elections take place regularly in any democracy there are more than 100 countries in the world in which elections take place to choose people's representatives we also know that elections are held in many countries that are not democratic but why do we need elections let us try to imagine a democracy without elections a rule of the people is possible without any elections if all the people can sit together every day and take all the decisions but this is not possible in any large community nor is it possible for everyone to have the time and knowledge to take decisions on all matters therefore in most democracies people rule through their representatives is there a democratic way of selecting representatives without elections let us think of a place where representatives are selected on the basis of age and experience or a place where they are chosen on the basis of education or knowledge there could be some difficulty in deciding on who is more experienced or knowledgeable but let us say the people can resolve these difficulties clearly such a place does not require elections 
how do we ensure that these representatives rule as per the wishes of the people this requires a mechanism by which people can choose their representatives at regular intervals and change them if they wish to do so this mechanism is called election so what is election it is a mechanism by which people can choose their representatives at regular intervals and change them if they wish to do so therefore elections are considered essential in our times for any representative democracy what makes an election democratic elections can be held in many ways all democratic countries hold elections but most non democratic countries also hold some kind of elections how do we distinguish democratic elections from any other election the minimum conditions of a democratic election are first everyone should be able to choose this means that everyone should have one vote and every vote should have equal value second there should be something to choose from parties and candidates should be free to contest elections and should offer some real choice to the voters thirdly the choice should be offered at regular intervals elections must be held regularly after every few years fourth the candidate preferred by the people should get elected fifth election should be conducted in a free and fair manner where people can choose as they really wish these might look like very simple and easy conditions but there are many countries where these are not fulfilled in this chapter we will apply these conditions to the elections held in our own country to see if we can call these democratic elections okay is it good to have political competition okay now let us understand its merits and demerits first regarding the merits political leaders are awarded for serving people and punished for not doing so the regular electoral competition provides incentives to political parties and leaders and important issues are raised they know that if they raise issues that people want to be raised their popularity and chances of victory will increase in the next elections but if they fail to satisfy the voters with their work they will not be able to win again and it forces parties and leaders to serve people regarding demerits it creates a sense of disunity and factionalism parties and candidates often use dirty tricks to win elections different political parties and leaders often level allegations against one another and even they does not allow to formulate sensible long term policies so this is what electoral competition does regular electoral competition provides incentives to political parties and leaders they know that if they raise issues that people want to be raised their popularity and chances of victory will increase in the next elections but if they fail to satisfy the voters with their work they will not be able to win again so if a political party is motivated only by desire to be in power even then it will be forced to serve the people this is a bit like the way a market works even if a shopkeeper is interested only in his profit he is forced to give good service to the customers if he does not the customer will go to some other shop similarly political competition may cause divisions and some ugliness but it finally helps 
to force political parties and leaders to serve the people okay hope you have understood before concluding let us recap what we have learned in this session we discussed why do we need elections it is to choose who will make laws for the country who will form the government and take major decisions and to choose the party who will guide the government and law making then we discussed regarding what makes an election democratic an election to be democratic everyone should have one vote and each vote should have one value parties and candidates should be free to contest elections election should be free and fair candidates preferred by the people should be elected and election should be held at regular intervals and we also discussed on is it good to have political competition and the merits and demerits in electoral competition okay hope you have understood meet you in the next session thank you